My name is Carolyn Goodridge. I am the executive director and founder of Art Impact International. We are here today to start our, or well, actually we had our first gallery talk. That was sort of our, our run through. Now this is where the artists are really gonna get into their pieces that are in this Femme Champions International Art Exhibition. So we have 55 artists in total. In this particular gallery, I didn't count them, but we may have maybe 10 or 15 of the artists. And we have a lot of work to go through. So I'm gonna invite you guys to, after we talk about the artwork for that particular artist, if you have any questions to the artist, if they're here, and if they're not, you can still, you know, ask that question or offer some kind of feedback. How does their artwork strike you so that when they hear the recording, they'll be somehow benefited to find out how do other people see their work? Do they have any questions about it? Any, any suggestions, any positive critique and so forth. So feel free to let this be a participatory talk. Okay, it's not just me talking with the artist talking but the attendees as well, okay? So let's click on your page, yeah. right? And this is, your, this is your work here. Yeah. Which is the video, which we, we don't have to watch that right now, but we have yeah. your artwork here on this page. And let me just um, read out loud here about Jonas so you can have an idea of his background and also his statement about the show for, for Femme Champions. All right, so Jonas says, I was born in 1983. I graduated with an MA in painting in 2017. I work as a painter, illustrator, and a tutor of painting. My international exhibitions are Chroma in 2019, Save Our Oceans, Save Our Seas in 2020, The Endangered, Can Art Save Them in 2020, and the child factor in 2021. His statement is, who is a femme champion? Is she a queen, a political activist, an athlete, or a distinguished woman? In my view, a femme champion is the one who sought for her freedom and independency, a woman who can inspire other women to show their abilities. Even it came to be an unknown woman even if she came to be an unknown woman who studies or works to achieve her positive role and place in society. A woman who makes her dreams real as every success begins with a dream. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Jonas, for your statement, Welcome. that was beautiful. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now, and, and also Jonas, and again, international artist, native of Iran, and he's yeah. on the call with us now. Thank you for being here, Jonas. So these Thank are the you, three, too. these are actually the four pieces that are in the show. We've got the Dream of Stars, <clears throat> Nomad Woman Four, the Woman Portrait One, and Portuguese Woman. So we're gonna start out. So you wanna start with Nomad yeah. Woman number mm, four? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so let's, let's start with that. Let me click on that. And we'll see it large as you're speaking. Yeah. Okay. 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 We see well, it. This is this is the the large piece. Let me just X yeah. out of this because we're we're on the e-commerce site. But this is a beautiful image of it right here. So yeah. so let's talk about this one. Tell us tell us about this one. Yeah, uh, Kevin. If you remember from my first exhibition with you, I had two other paintings about Noma. Noma. Well, uh, it's my personal interest and, uh, and I like uh, nomadic life, which is a very uh, simple lifestyle. Uh, although we do not see uh, such a style of life around the world now, uh, but in our country, in our population, we have 1% of, uh, there is uh, our, uh, one percent, around 1% 1 of our populations are uh, nomads. Uh, and uh, they have very simple life, but very beautiful. Uh, and women are in the center. I mean, uh, they have the main role in nomadic life. And uh, they produce natural and healthy foods. Uh, they weave very nice carpets. 
and um, they they wear very uh, colorful and beautiful clothes. And I try to uh, show them in, in my painting uh, with my own style that you know uh, it's the uh, palette knife. And uh, especially in this uh, painting, I try to show how colorful they are, how their uh, their clothes, even uh, the surrounding, the wall uh, is um, kind of you see is like uh, abstract painting. It was a, a wall with. Uh, clay or mud or what to say. Uh, and uh, I, I changed it. I changed it to uh, kind of abstract uh, strokes of paint. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's a balance between the abstract and the figurative. You've got yeah, a lot yeah. of great gesture and you've got real detailed work is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it, tell, yeah. tell us how long you've been doing this, the palette knife um oil because it's in oil so tell us how how did you come to decide you as an artist to do it this way and not another way yeah i was studying painting for ma and um i didn't know what should i paint i could paint is different but uh i didn't have my own style with just drawing or painting but not my own style but suddenly I discovered a palette knife. I was painting and I used a knife on the, on the canvas. Later I say, why, why, should, why? Um, I can't um, paint only with palette knife and I can uh, uh, throw it away the brushes and just, just, uh, just to paint with palette knife. And as I started to paint almost seven years, uh, yeah, I think it was from seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I made it bigger so we yeah. could see the how you use yeah. this palette mm -hmm. knife to, to get yeah. these beautiful. I must say, uh, uh, in, uh, in this painting, I used uh, different sizes of palette knife. Even I had a palette knife uh, with the size was, I think, almost um, 10 inches. In some in the <laughs> upper, if you look at the upper side, you, you will see uh, our big, very big, yeah, on the top. Mm -hmm. You see uh, very big strokes. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. Are, uh, are done with a, a palette knife of uh, 10 inches. You know, can you imagine? Or wow. bigger, maybe, maybe yeah. bigger. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because this, this painting was a big one and uh, I had to use a very big palette knife. Right. So this yeah. this this canvas is how large now? Again? Yeah, you have, have I don't remember. Yeah, we have 50. it. We have it here. Let me just yeah. move. It's more than fifty. Yeah, it's fifty-four by fifty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. I let's... have other. I have other paintings bigger than this. Right. You have seen it already. Yes, very large. One one yeah. piece you were doing, but you too large right now for the show. Yeah. Which which yeah. is the second one you want to talk about next? Well, uh, we already talked about the whatever you choose. I can talk about. Okay, let's let's do the dream of stars. I think that one is yeah. very very apropos to the femme champions. Yeah. Tell yeah. us tell us about this one. Yeah. The technique again is palette knife. Uh, let me talk about this technique. Then I will I will tell who is she. Um, in this one, I, I try to uh, use a very detail, and um, the, the, the strokes was a little, uh, little not not free. Uh, I try to paint uh, with details. And uh, this woman, this woman is the first uh, woman I think. Uh, as a tourist, she's a uh, scientist too. But uh, as a tourist, she uh, is the first one, and she uh, went to the um, space international space internet uh, center. Station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, she's uh, she was born in my country, but uh, she's living in uh, United States now, and uh, she has, I think, a company about space. Or something like that. Wonderful. And it's yeah. a 16 by 20. 
right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. International self yeah, you, you woman. Can, if you want, you can um, see some of uh, her interviews in um, right. YouTube or other media. Okay. So that's her name, Anushe yeah. Ansari. But she's, she, even though she shares your same last name, she's not a relative. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! I always say, "Yeah, she is my cousin." <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, and uh, Karen, maybe we we send this this painting to her. Yes. Uh, I I told you. Um, one of my friends told me to paint her. She's uh, studying um, space science too. She's graduated now, and um. she's an engineer. Uh, oh. And uh, they had a uh, kind of interview um, with Anusha uh, in, in one of our uh, universities. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was to um, tell her that we, we, are, we will give her this one as a gift. Oh. Uh, but uh, the interview was recorded already and we couldn't tell her. But mm -hmm. later, maybe, maybe later, uh, we, we make a way and uh, stand for her, right. the gift. Okay, just remind yeah. me of that. Remind me of that. And we'll yeah. see how we can connect with her for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Because again, like I said, we want to take Femme Champions and just yeah. keep it going. Even if not yeah. with these artworks, just the idea of Femme Champions, because I believe yeah. this can we can do different shows for years with just yeah. this topic with gender equality. Yeah, so, Karen, she, yes. she had a very interesting uh, story. She was saying in childhood, um, she painted uh, that she will go to space. Wow. She said, uh, uh, she told her family, and they, they said, as if, and I know, mocking her or being, saying in a way that, yeah, you will go, you will go, that, uh, as if it is impossible for a person, for, for a person, or maybe for a woman to go to a space. But Later, she, she went to space. You know, yeah. it, is, it is very important. I, I told in my uh, um, statement that everything is such with a dream. You must yeah. dream first. You want, yeah. Then you can work on it and you can, uh, you can achieve it. That's right. Everything that yeah. we see with our eyes and ears, are all the things that are not just natural, the yeah. radiator, the lamps, the rugs, the beds, the everything yeah. around us. Somebody had to dream it up first, somehow, yeah, yeah. some way, and then it came to be. So as artists, we have a lot of power, a lot of power, because at least we know that we can create. Whether sure. you do the media through painting, through a, an exhibition, a total, through time, yeah. through space, whatever it is, it is you're right Jonas that, that you dream first your imagination yeah that's the most powerful thing that that is senior to facts facts don't stand a chance to the imagination sure sure right so let's let's do one more of yours because we we really yeah. want to to move along yeah how, yeah yeah how about um portuguese woman yeah, again, I like um, the, the, the style of his clothes. No, I like colorful clothes. Uh, they, they wear like our nomadic women. They have colorful clothes, outfits. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, again, again, palette knife, even detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just mask. Unfortunately, in, yeah, in, uh, unfortunately, a picture on uh, to when you are looking in the screen, you do not see uh, the beauty of palette knife. You must right. see by your own eyes. You know, right. you have you have my, some of my paintings. You know, you you can see them when right. you are looking at them uh, by your own eyes. They are different from the picture. Right, right. right. Do you believe and, it? Yeah, and we and we know that we know that it's just not yeah. the same. We know it's not yeah. the same. Yeah. All right. Well, well, guys, um, real quickly, let's let's open it up for like, you know, a couple minutes for questions yeah. and comments to Jonas. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, this is really important to the artist to get feedback about his style, his medium, 
his technique. Let him know how you how this strikes you, his work. You can unmute yourself and 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 um, share your thoughts with Jonas. Okay. Pat, did you? Pat, yeah, okay. I have. Um, a comment. Um, these costumes are so glorious and not easily understood by um, us in, in the United States. It would be great if you could give a little bit of background about the costumes and what they're for. And is it, you know, for some kind of celebration or... Um, just sort of set the stage for how these women actually live. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, um, they live in uh, some, sometimes in mountains or uh, some ground. Uh, mostly the color is gray or brown, a very uh, 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 nude, very uh, gray, brown. They are not colorful, but the women wear uh, colorful um, clothes so they make their life colorful. You know, they add color to nature. There is little uh, uh, color in nature, but uh, neutral colors are, but uh, women uh, uh, add color but by their clothes. No, it's, it's very nice. You add something to nature, their color. And they always, uh, almost always wear this kind of clothes. Nice, nice. It's not just for a uh, wedding or something. That is mostly they wear, but in weddings, in celebra some uh, celebrations, uh, they wear their new clothes, for example, but they always are this way. Beautiful. You can you can see, if you, you want to know more, I'm not an expert in nomadic love, but if you want to see, uh, you can search in YouTube or something about nomadic life in my country, you are, and nice. you will see. It is very hot style of life, but uh, very beautiful, very mm -hmm. very simple. They are very, um, very awesome people. Thing I like to, to live like them one day in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jonas, and thank you for the question. Um, so. Let's let's move along. Thank you, Jonas. So we're gonna thank you too, Yes, <laughs> thank you again for sharing your art with us. It was just beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Great. Hi, Anand. So I'm gonna open up your your page. All right. Okay. So this is this is Adnan, and Anand is a native of India, and. He lives in northern India, by the Himalayas, and he has been working for a very long time. You can, this is a little lengthy for me to read now, but I'll read the first statement, the first paragraph. I am an artist and an experimentalist at heart. I love to experiment with art style, medium, and the tools I use. I have worked on traditional oils on canvas, acrylics on canvas, to my own unique mediums, photographic chemicals on bromides, which I call photo paintings, and oil and acrylic on x-ray films. My work includes hundreds of paintings in different mediums and styles with themes ranging from nature to different art forms to ancient Hindu gods and goddesses. So you guys, you feel free to, to read everything but we're going to go with the art now and he has three paintings in the show he's got primary evident harmony and grace so anand i feel the the first one primary is very apropos to female gender equality so let's talk about this one here and and okay <laughs> so again thank you anand for for being here to speak about your work. Hi everyone, I am Anand from India. The title of this painting is Primary. This is an oil painting on canvas. 
I used rollers and sponge to get these different sketches, textures, and I used palette knives in certain portions. See, the, the idea of this painting is be, be it in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, architecture, mathematics, or nothing. Women primarily drive this world. To me, they are like primary colors in different hues, tints, tones, and shades. They add beauty to our life and life to humans. This is what I want to depict in this. They are playing guitars, music, different colors you can see, mm -hmm. primary. So they are driving this world, this woman. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> very good. I love that yes. idea. <laughs> And this is 30 by 40. 30 by 40. Oil on canvas. Okay. Very beautiful. Okay. So, so that's that one. And then we have the aesthetic is quite different here with evident in harmony. Yeah. So let's, let's look at that one. This, this I did it in impressionistic style using a lot of linseed oil, thick paint, and then squeezing with the rollers. I put the lo load of color and squeeze it, mm -hmm. sponge, and these textures. You can feel the linseed oil paint mixed, evident in harmony. Okay. The inner meaning of this painting is the quality of women to blend into any situation and at stand out in any role amazes me the most. The work is inspired by this feeling of mind. It also depicts their best qualities, patience, warm, that help them to conquer the dreams and anything they aim for. Thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's evident in harmony. And the yeah. last is grace. Grace. This is also same technique, oil on canvas. Linseed oil and paint. Mix it together and with the rollers, I have moved on the canvas so that you can get these textures, different textures. The inner meaning of this uh, is the title is evident in harmony. The quality of women to blend into any situation and at stand out in any role amazes me the most. The work is inspired by this feeling of mind. It also depicts their best qualities, patience, forms that help them to conquer their dreams and anything they aim for. Mm -hmm. Even in a day and time filled with gloom and despair, women show grace. They bring in movement in stillness. You find the movement here in all the three. And they add light to the darkness. It is all dark and their clothes are white, they are brightening, mm -hmm. they, are, they are adding light to the darkness. That's what I want to show, grace. Mm -hmm. They are always graceful, women are always graceful. Mm -hmm. In spite of their gloom and despair, they show grace. Yeah, yeah. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah, the, the thoughts behind the, the piece are, is very wonderful because it's true, right? Women have hard time. Men also have hard time, but it's hard, is is important that they do show the grace that you depict here and that they bring the light to their environment that you're depicting here. So, and I believe that the technique that you show as 
as Jonas was saying, is hard to see the beauty on online, but if we could see it in real, I'm sure it would have a lot, you could appreciate the textures more, but I've got it large enough that we can get a sense of your texture and your work, how you actually executed the piece. Now tell me just quickly here, you have like gypsum, are, is this the chemicals that are so liquid? No, no, this is only white, oil color white, yellow ochre and burnt sina. Oh, These three colors mixed uh -huh. and squeezed away with the roller. Okay, okay. But I could see some drips here on the right that's yeah. coming down. Now, is, is that yeah. from the linseed oil or is that just the paint? Oil and roll. Yes. Okay. No okay. chemical. No okay. Chemical. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. You have to squeeze the paint. Ah, okay. And that's what's making the sprinkle, right? Yeah. Okay. Very beautiful. It, it has freshness to it. It just adds freshness when we see the the energy of the pieces when we see sprinkles and sprays and brush strokes we get more of a sense of the artist spirit in the piece so i just wanted to ask about that and point it out um, as far as i feel it when i look at it thank you very much i believe this this is entitled grace 38 by 28 by 30 very beautiful very beautiful. And the, and the last one, and I'll open it up for questions. I think we, we covered the three. Yes, we did. Yes, okay. Okay. Very good. So, so um, the other attendees on the call now, please, if you have questions or if you want to, to give any suggestions or feedback to Anand, please do so. Don't hesitate to give him um, your feedback at this point. I'm sure he will greatly appreciate your feedback. Uh, hi, Anand. Uh, I just want hi. to say your paintings are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. I enjoy it. Thank you. And thank you, too. Thank you. She has, given a, she has yeah. given a good opportunity to show us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, very beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jonas, for that comment. He, I appreciate that. Well, all of these works are acrylics on board um, because I like uh, gels and paste uh, that acrylics have. And I like creating fields of energy across the surface. Um, and I also like the gels because I can get lots of layers mm -hmm. and depth, um, like there's a sedimentation process, mm -hmm. uh, things settle. Um, so that's like a background of just why it kind of looks the way it does. Okay. And, um, and before you go ahead, Pat, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to read for everyone your bio and your statement as I did the other artists, okay? Okay. All right, so Patricia Smith, um, this is her bio. Making art is my way of making connections. It is a spiritual journey that allows me to go deeper into who I am called to be. It is my way of opening me up, awakening me, challenging me, helping me to make sense of my life. A lifelong artist and social justice activist, I am always exploring ways to bring my social justice work with the spiritual artistic journey. The four paintings in this exhibit reflect some of my art and social justice concerns. Joyce Scott is the Baltimore artist who inspired my response to COVID, an interactive painting that includes a COVID mask, opening as a heart, worry beads that can be taken off and painting as needed, and prayerful missive missives on ribbons written by friends about their COVID experiences. The others are tributes to social justice heroines that inspired my activism. So Patricia, thank you so much for being a part of this exhibit. 
and that you've done you've been doing work for social justice including fem including gender equality and that you already had some pieces in mind for this and these paintings again just gorgeous so i'm going to stop now and now i'm going to hand it back over to you <laughs> okay um again the last few decades i've particularly been interested in social justice. And so these pieces reflect issues that I'm currently engaged with. Um, these works are similar in that they reflect courageous women who have had a lasting impact in the ongoing quest for social justice. They are physically active, um, even though they look anonymous. Um, because they are actively pursuing social justice. So um, you want to look at Joy Scott first? Yes, we'll click on hers. Mm -hmm. So I met um, Joy Scott um, several decades ago and I had her exhibit in the college where I was teaching and um, she gave a lecture with her mother who who was a, um, a um, kind of traditional quilt maker. Um, and she said she was a traditional quilt maker because um, in her poor black neighborhood, uh, that's what women had to do because they couldn't afford blankets. And as Joyce said, um, her mother is now gone. But she said her mother uh, swaddles everyone in love. And so um, when I was going through, um, like all of us, the trauma of living in isolation, um, I thought about worry beads and um, how I thought about Joyce, who works with beads, you know, all day, every day, and makes sculptures out of them, and that that must be a very healing thing to do you know, the therapy of, of um, your hands ma making things out of beads, even though the images themselves that she does are often really traumatic because she deals with racism and sexism. Um, so she's the most radical artist I ever knew. And um, sometimes people are horrified. For instance, one work I saw of hers was a life-size black man um, lynched and hanging from a, a museum ceiling. And another image she had in my exhibit was a beaded a black woman uh, sprawled on a beaded white sheets with beaded blood gushing out of her wounds that this was a raped woman. Um, so her, her, she's absolutely fearless. Her mother is fearless in a totally different way. And um, she's absolutely inspired me. And of course, even some of my feminist friends just couldn't get her. And I was so happy because she's about my age that she won a MacArthur Genius Award in 1916. She's the oldest recipient to ever get that award. Wow. And I was just so thrilled because she never left her little Baltimore neighborhood. And a lot, you know, most of the work she does reflects her experiences in her neighborhood. Wow. Um, so I just love her. Anyway, so this, um, so she inspired me, but she's obviously, her work is totally different than this image. So this is a COVID mask that I opened up into a heart. Mm -hmm. And the ribbons, now there's many more ribbons on it, are um, statements that people I encounter or friends have made um, about their experiences with COVID. Mm -hmm. And I met one woman who uh, lost five loved ones. Wow. And so she made a ribbon uh, with the name and the date of death of all five. Mm. Um, so it's been um, a powerful piece to me. And um, I hope you look up Joy Scott because she's sure. extraordinary. Sure. Wow. Thank you for, for educating us on Joy Scott and what she's done. Wow and the honors that she's received. That's really, really good information for us to, to expand our appreciation of, of women, right? 
All right, so let's let's cover Brianna. Brianna. Yeah. Brianna. So most of you probably know Brianna Taylor um, was murdered by police officers while she was sleeping in her bed in March of 2020, and um, it was a botched raid on her apartment. They were evidently looking for an old boyfriend of hers. Um, no one was ever charged in her slaughter, but her death was one of the main drivers of wide-scale demonstrations over policing practices and racial injustice in our country. Um, and so this painting, um, if you can look at the figure, um, questions are resolved. Is the figure moving towards us? Is it still in our consciousness? Are we really going to work for um, police reform or is it moving away from us? Is it receding from our consciousness and our will to action? Um, so that was the puzzle that I had while I was working on that piece. Mm. Wow. And you get an idea of the fields of energy in that piece too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Beautiful. And and what was the size on that one again? Let's see. They're all small. I make them as small as I can. Okay, 18 by for ecological reasons. Yeah, sure. But to still get the fields of energy, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of drive me. So right. they're like 18 by 24 or something. Right. Like that. right. That's that's the I mean, that's relatively small for some artists that work like huge, but that's still not tiny. Some artists go five by five or you know, even right. smaller. But so yours is, you know, it's it's I think it's fine for what you're doing in a lot of, you know. In, detail imagery that you have here it, it does lend to a lot of good energy you know motion and, and energy and what's going on in the piece very very much so this one here is Don Wooten whistleblower right Don uh, Wooten is a um a nurse that was working in the Irwin County Detention Center in Georgia and she blew the whistle on them, um, exposing medical neglect during the pandemic, unsafe conditions, um, and ma especially mass hysterectomies. Oh dear. And so there was a doctor who was uh, performing hysterectomies on young uh, Latinx women, with, obviously without their knowledge, and so she exposed that. So she uh, was demoted. She faced death threats to herself and to her family. And, you know, this was just last year. Um, but there was so much commotion over it. ICE uh, had to uh, abandon that facility. Wow. Wow. Why, and, why were these doctors doing those hysterectomies? Why? Under what? I think it's, it's the continuation of eugenics. That, that some doctor uh, didn't want babies born from immigrant women oh. and decided to take care of it himself. Wow. And, and they didn't know this was happening and they maybe just came in for some routine gynecological work? Right, that, that okay. he would say that there was a minor issue or something, but then they would get out of the operating room and... and uh, you know, oh, as a 20 year old who can never bear a child. Oh dear. And this so the figure is dealing with that issue. Wow. Wow. Well, again, you're definitely educating us, Pat, on some of the things that are going on. I mean, I, I can't imagine unless somebody tells me these things you know, and I'm sure it's true for other uh, attendees of this talk, what it is that drives the artist to paint what they paint, at least for this show, you know. So again, thank you for knowing all these things and for sharing it through your artwork, because that's one of our, I believe, purposes as artists is to sort of, <laughs> to, to, to tell the stories that may not be being told, especially not through art, so, you know, this, this is a one of a kind piece, very unique and 
and needed, you know, needed because you're bringing attention to these details of what's going on in society today around the globe. I'm sure this isn't just happening in that state, in that city. Okay, um, let's keep going. Rachel Carson. Yeah, this is a little bit older piece. Um, so this was done with plaster that I carved into. But she's uh, like my heroine for um, in environment, the environment. Um, and this was back in the 50s and early 60s that she wrote Silent Spring, mm. um, which was her concern about the future of the planet and all life on Earth. And she documented the adverse environmental effects caused by the indiscriminate use of chemical pesticides, especially aerial spraying. Mm -hmm. And without her relentless efforts, and again, you can imagine um, what chemical corporations uh, wanted to do to her, mm -hmm. uh, DDT would not have been banned in this country. Wow. And this is 36 by 24. So this is a little larger than your right. others. Okay, beautiful, wow. So, so Rachel Carson really is an environmental champion. Wow. And she did, she did this all alone. She had no one supporting her research or her work. Wow. It was all new. And then look at the movements you right. know, created. Right, right. Well, there, with these four pieces, Patricia, you, you know, you've given us a lot to chew on and to understand and to get motivated to see what can we do as citizens of the globe, really, with what, so the, all of your works were necessary to be a part of this show. They're, they're all beautifully done and the, your artistry is important that you've taken the time to do this, you know, so, and, and this is a part of what you do anyway, right? these social justice issues right oh, those right. are my two passions art and yeah. social justice yeah right right so i'm going to open and open it up for i'm sure we're going to have um other artists here on the line and attendees who want to to give some kind of feedback to you to your four pieces in the show so please guys can you one at a time um unmute yourselves and and give your feedback to Patricia okay uh, hi Carol whoops I just oh I'm trying to I just wanted to see the pieces are stunning they're very evocative um I didn't necessarily know most of the stories, but I'm so happy to have learned about them and wanting to learn more. And they are, like the detail in them is amazing. And anyways, congratulations, they're gorgeous. Thank and you. Very, very powerful. Yeah. Thank you for that, for that, Carol. Thank you for that. Carol is a multimedia emerging artist who is passionate about people and the stories that make them resilient and vulnerable. I seek opportunities to engage with people on the street and in public spaces for inspiration. I have been mentored and inspired by artists and teachers while taking courses at the Ottawa School of Art and Painting in Provence, France with Canadian artist Gordon Harrison. I am currently a member of United Art Space, virtual art community based in the UK. I have exhibited in a local gallery and currently exhibiting in a community art space. After a career in the social service sector, I continue to be curious about community, which includes arts and culture, nature, physical spaces, and how they interrelate with people. Dessem Mains is a tribute to many contributions by women and girls towards making the world a better place. The painting captures the power, simplicity, diversity, and relevance, which intends, 
which intends to elicit emotional responses from unintentional memories. Inspiration is drawn from relationships and life experiences by shining light on the activities of girls and women that are often understated, automatic, intimate, private, skilled, yet seldom shared. The small scale of the paintings intentionally mimics the intimacy of the subject matter. The colors and composition imitate shining a warmth light on each moment in time. Women's hands merit our attention as a rich source of nonverbal behavior to help us understand each other and make sense of the world we live in. Carol, thank you for being here. You are in Canada and we have two, three, four pieces to cover. So let's go quickly and start with fit and fast. <laughs> I really, I was trying to present kind of four paintings that that uh, are part of actually a large collection that I did during the pandemic. I'm not done, but I've done like 60 paintings of women's hands. Um, and so, I mean, this is one of somebody, and, and I have a relationship with every one of the women that I've painted the hands somebody from the West Coast who is an avid cyclist who I reached out to. So either I'm reaching out to people or, uh, uh, or I'm meeting people on the street and asking if I can photograph their hand, if I can document uh, their story. Um, now, so, now, now, Carol, is this of a bicycle? Or are her hands yeah. on a bicycle? That's right, they're on a bicycle. Okay. Um, the handbars, right? That's right, yes. Okay, okay, just, just um, checking. <laughs> okay. What I was trying to do, yeah, is just, just focus, focus on the activities of the hands. Okay. Um, in, the collect, in the collection, what I was also trying to represent, you know, diversity in also kind of an activity in culture and age in sexual identity um, in different, uh, yeah. So, you know, there's one, a woman, the next one is of a Mason, this young woman who graduated with the highest honors. And I think she's the youngest woman in this area who's graduated as a Mason. And, she also won all kinds of awards for her amazing tattoos. So, wow. uh, uh, I mean, trying to also use the paintings to encourage people, our young women, to do non-traditional work uh, or to, you know, to get involved in and really the message behind it is women can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so this so, is just... Uh, or is this image here on her forearm, or is that... Um on her arm as yes. she's a tattoo artist she, as well? No, okay. no, she's not a tattoo artist. She's just tattooed. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And and this in image here, she's holding um, like a mallet. And is is this that she's it's hanging her, with a hammer? No, it's it's a lay, a lay, lay, lay. Okay. And so she's applying, she's oh. working, yeah, she's applying kind of cement on a okay. ceiling. Okay. Is is this the ceiling up here? Those yeah. those those pieces of wood. That's okay. right. That's right. Okay, great. I'm gonna go back here so we can see it even in, yeah. in right here. Okay. And they are all small. The, all of the paintings are between like ten by ten to twelve by twelve. Right. Um, this one is ten by 12. ten by twelve. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then the, and then and this the next one was around the pandemic, you know, just to turn, and this was uh, paramedics that were uh, these women paramedics giving the, um, the vaccine vaccination. Yeah. Um, so again, I reached out to people that I knew and say, look, I'm doing this collection. I really need, to, I want this to be part of kind of what we're seeing, what we're living right now. And women have been like, amazing during the pandemic, right? In terms of mitigating illnesses, working in long-term care, all the nurses. The, uh, so I wanted th th these hands to be part of this collection. Wow, okay. And, the, and then the last one. The last one is, um, this is a, a, a friend of mine who I work uh -oh. with. 
Oops. Sorry, somehow this this got twisted around. So sorry. And she's um, a let's woman. let's look at it small. <laughs> It's a Muslim women pray, a woman praying. She's the wife of a, a man that I work with. And the other thing kind of through, you know, through doing these paintings is everything that I'm learning also, like about masonry, about vaccination, about uh, the way people pray. Um, and so kind of that was just representing uh, that. All right. Great. And like I said in my bio, all the black background, most of the paintings have a black background and it, it was meant to like shine the light on the hands, on the activity, on the intimacy of what was happening. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you for pulling this together as a cohesive group for this exhibit that you're focusing on the hands. Um, does anyone have any questions for Carol or feedback for her art? Oh yeah, um, it's very interesting. I was watching uh, through the paintings and uh, it was interesting for me that hands are symbols in her paintings, you know, as a symbol of ability, of doing, of, of women can do the symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, she focuses on the, the hands only. That uh, you have, you have your this expression that you can that tell a lady by her, by her hands. You know, it's very interesting that uh, I saw these uh, hands, and mm -hmm. uh, for me, these mm -hmm. are uh, symbols. Mm -hmm. Thank you. They're very mm -hmm. nice. I've been doing a lot of research, a lot of reading on hands, on the symbolism, on what they mean, on also touch, uh, just the, and especially during the pandemic, right, when touch was just not possible. Yeah. And uh, so that's been a lot of the work also behind this collection. Thank you. It's very interesting. Thank you. Great, great. Beautiful. Okay. Thank All you. right. So now we're going to go with Lois. More black well. Thank you, Lois, for being here. Thank you. And let me make sure people <clears throat> can, can see you when you're talking. I'm going to introduce you. Um, okay, so you can come. So Lois, Lois, yes, Blackwell. She studied fine art at Howard University at the undergraduate and graduate levels at the George Washington University during her doctoral studies. I'm going to leave it at that. And also for this statement, as an artist, I am deeply drawn into my aesthetic utopia. Art fosters creativity, which stimulates my imagination and is a, as paramount as food and water. Art is a uniquely fascinating discipline that arouses my awareness, perception, emotional satisfaction, and it increases my appreciation artistically. I am seriously inspired and motivated by change, color, fashion, nature, and the abstract, as well as realism. As a consequence, I allow my hand to portray what my mind envisions professionally and personally. Art is utmost special and inevitably a significant factor in my life. And Lois is in the United States and she has three pieces, oh, sorry, four pieces in the show. We're gonna start with Femme So Fine, Tina Turner. This is her rendition of Tina Turner. So tell us a little bit about Tina Turner, Lois, and why she is um, your Femme champion. <laughs> oh, I chose her because of her ability to uh, overcome almost anything that got in her way and some things did. Also, when she, she and her husband broke up, you know, she still had to work. And uh, at first in America, they really didn't uh, take to her I think it was because of her age and she wasn't old, but she was older than some who first start out alone. And um, she did, in other words, this man had called her a B and called her old, a guy who was in charge of, you know, this club. 
And for, you know, people come in and uh, for, uh, actually get, um, perform another, do a show. So she did that, but in this particular area, I think it was out in California. And she left there. And when she arrived in Europe, I think England was first. She did the best ever. And from then on, she she just just climbed. Mm -hmm. Nothing got in her way. And I noticed everybody loved her. Mm -hmm. Her um, music, her dancing, her mm -hmm. playfulness on the stage. Um, she also loves kids. And she gives a lot. And I'll just name one, and that's um, uh, St. Jude Hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, she's a, if I'll invite everybody to just look her up online and see how much she's done. Okay. And um, because she has, she's done a lot. Wow. Wow. You know, um, giving. Excellent. Not just money, but you know. Of her time. Herself and her time, yes. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't exactly look like her. Mm -hmm. So I just did what I thought I should do. And right. I, you know, she wore these wigs. Many of them were <laughs> like, right, right. Very attractive, but this time, what I did, I cut her hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> and put a little oh, color in it. Right. And, and I appreciate <laughs> that, um, Lois. You know, um, I, I want to continue something of, about your bio that that you were uh, you are a former doctoral fellow yeah. and that you taught in the district of columbia public schools mm -hmm. morgan state university and the university of district of columbia and the george washington yeah. university and that you are a visual artist and a fashion designer yeah. and that your work has been featured at the howard university gallery of art mm -hmm. and all island art show and Martha's Vineyard in Oak Bluffs, Massachusetts, where you received the Merit Award, Fells Point Art Festival in Baltimore, Maryland. Re reason why I wanted to, to say that is, as you just said, you know, this doesn't exactly look like Tina Turner, but the reason why this is in this show is because she is, she truly is a femme champion. And mm -hmm. however way it's, it's depicted, we know her in our heart that she is a femme champion. And so thank you for for, for pointing that out as a black woman, that she is one of your champions, not just for yourself and for humanity in general, but for music and for her humanitarian and philanthropic contributions yeah. to this planet. So thank you for pointing her out. And I just wanna say aesthetically, you have the color palette <laughs> of these next two paintings and even the fourth one you they're 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 all congealed the colors are are there they're all there they're connected right so i want to go to the hidden personas i find this one is just uh oh we, we're not we haven't <laughs> so forgive me for anyway we can see it here i'll make okay. it larger here so you can see there are five faces there. <laughs> can you see? Yeah, I can see. Uh, I can yeah. see one. Let's yeah. see one. I could see one one set of eyes and mm -hmm. two sets of eyes, three sets of eyes, and, and they're all like the yellow. So I see three. Where where are the fourth one? Okay. Here's one. Can where? You see my finger. Uh top uh left. Uh-huh. Top is in yellow. Uh huh. I see the two yellow. yellows. Uh huh. You see the two yellows. I see the two yellows. Is that one the red one with the the three dots? Is that a face? Uh, she, there's one in between the red and yellow at the top. It's above that white line. It's uh, uh okay. It's you know what? Yeah, I don't. I don't see it. But that's okay. That's okay. We we'll take your word for it. We do see. I do see. Um, I think I counted three. Let's see. Do you see one, one in red? 
Well, the one in red, I see there's three dots. So I'm thinking, is that three it? Dots. Yeah. Okay, that's one. great. Okay, okay. So that's that's number three. And then four is the one right beneath it. Yes. Right. And then okay. the fifth one now is where? Come back up again. Come all the way up. Now, looks like this person has on glasses, but oh, they okay. have a in mouth. Red? Yeah. In red? Okay. Yeah. So that's an eye, and that's one eye then. Okay. Got it. Very good. Okay. And this one is entitled Hidden Personas. Well, they really were hidden, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, she could just come out and do almost anything. Right. And um, I thought about when she was really going through stuff, you know, with him. And she, nobody would know. Right. She's not on the stage. Right. She didn't All know. that was she hidden. had a black eye. Right. She did makeup on it, you know. Right. Right. Wow. Uh, I invite everybody to read about uh, about her. And when she gives interviews, she tells a lot herself. Oh, okay. A lot, of, a lot is written. And she has books. So I thought it was interesting. And then she, for one thing, when you said fam champion, she, I don't know why I thought about her. Okay. I thought about others. But she became a fixation for some reason. So that's why wow. I did it. <laughs> okay. That's why I chose her. <laughs> and well, thank you for choosing yeah. her. And you, and the other two is is also regarding Tina, yeah. right? So okay. the the post the post performance exactly. and envisioning song and dance. Tell us about those. The uh, envisioning song and dance is actually in the beginning because she had, she had dancers with her on stage mm -hmm. background, and I saw. A video where she was actually teaching them. She's choreographing herself. Mm -hmm. So before you get up and doing the steps, what do you have in your head? You know what I'm saying? Right. About what are you going to do? What are you going to teach today? Mm -hmm. Which uh, pieces are we going to perform on stage? Mm -hmm. So those dances come from whatever the song she's going to sing. Wow. So that's for that. And uh, where's the other one? Okay, let's go to the the post performance. Post performance that's the last one. Afterwards, when you go back in your dressing room after everything is over, you sit down and blow it out. Mm -hmm. That was good, blah blah. And you say to yourself, wow. and they go out and celebrate a little bit. And I wow. tried to make this a little. Wow. Well, this definitely looks, it has a feeling of, of celebratory, a celebration, and yeah. I, I think of carnival when I see this. Mm -hmm. I see Me this, too. like the, the vivid costumes and right. the motion and the dancing. Exactly. Yeah, the, 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 the feeling of it is definitely there. You've depicted it well. It's definitely, it works. Yeah, thank you. So does anyone have any comments or feedback for Lois? about her work. It, it just started thundering and lightning here in Brooklyn, guys. So oh, really? hopefully, the, hopefully the, the internet won't do it its thing again on us. Oh, <laughs> right. Yes, I'm right here too in Colombia. I mean, it's, it's really crazy. I, oh. You may hear it on the, you may hear it. I don't know if you can even hear it, but it's loud in here. Oh boy, I don't, okay. I don't hear it. Okay, good. <laughs> good. We had some rain this morning. All right, all yeah, right. Yeah, we did. We had some too. D does anyone have any comments for, for Lois? Oh, look, um, oh, are you, I think you're on mute. Let me, no, you're not on mute. You're not on mute. Can, can everybody hear Hubert? Who is it? Hubert. Oh, Tony Hubert. puts his thumbs up so they can hear you. Okay. Okay. I can, I'll hear him. Okay. I, I hear but good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I just want to Great. The last piece that you showed, I haven't seen you work for a number of years. That's uh, one of the most exciting pieces I've seen of you. Congratulations on that. I like your use of negative spaces. I can't hear him that well. Oh yeah, he he can't. Uh, maybe maybe you want to sit next to me here. You want to sit um, next to me? Okay, I'm done. Oh, he was saying your, your negative spaces, and this was one of the most exciting pieces that 
worse that he's seen you do. Really? But he was soft. Maybe maybe your volume is is low or something. All right. So he likes my color. <laughs> yeah, he likes your colors. It's very vibrant and just you know, yeah. He's he's absolutely. He's actually here with me, but he's a little oh, bit good. away from the room. Yeah. Okay. So we're actually driving from Brooklyn um, back to the DMV tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. All oh, right. Okay. Are you still there? Are you still going to stay in Brooklyn for a while? Um, don't ask that. I'm not okay. sure. <laughs> I get it. Sure. I get it, girl. I'm not sure. You know, dad is passed and life is just like you You take a bowl and you just throw it up in the air and it's like yeah. wood. I know. It's like it's a lot. So, okay. I've been there. I've been yeah. there. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But you're so good. You know, you'll be okay. You'll be fine, really. Thank you. I, I feel I have a lot of, of support. The work that I'm doing your art, you know, the artists, all of you are, I take, I feel you are my friends, colleagues, we help each other out. You know, when I need something, I ask and you guys come back and you say, yes, we can do this. So thank you for being my friend, everyone. Yeah. People say you have, you know, you have business and you have your personal life. For me, it's inextricably combined. It just good. combined, you know, I can't separate myself like that, that no. for me. So again, so thank you for that. Um, anybody welcome. else, any, anybody else has any um, other feedback for Lois? Thank you, Hubert. <laughs> he said, she, she said, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> he says, carry on, you're doing well. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And this is his work. He was talking about Diana Ross. Yeah. So he, he had one piece, and this piece is Diana Ross. And let me go up here. So Anand Strong is a native Washingtonian artist, musician, producer, songwriter, and DJ mix show host. He has exhibited works of abstraction, pop art, drawings on canvas at exclusive exhibits in the nation's capital. He uses digital canvas technique utilizing technology in the design process, Creation Unlimited. Anau Strong has had works displayed in various selected exhibitions in Washington, D.C., including the Giovanni Art Group of Capitol Hill, over the years. His inspiration comes from life, love, music, and art design. We share the divine creation. And that is his statement. For Diana Ross, he says she's a pioneer in music as a member of the original girl group and Motown recording artists, the Supremes. Diana Ross went on to define a generation and beyond as musical legend activist, actress, businesswoman, and icon worldwide. Ms. Diana Ross is Anud Strong's choice to illustrate and pay homage to this femme champion. So that is his statement about Diana Ross. I just want to show it to you in the large. I thought this piece was just, you could see her face here. It just it does look like Diana Ross. And he just has her in red and black, simple. And he's just very illustrative. All right. Jibin actually did a portrait of, of our vice president, oh, yeah. Kamala Harris. So that's Jibin. Let me just make this a little easier for me to see. And you guys can see. This is a picture of Jibin here. He's from India and he's currently living in the United States. He and I worked tirelessly on getting his um, immigration status and I can, um, that's some good news. Yeah. He called me um, a couple of weeks ago and said he's got it. He's got his um, green card and um, it was just a joy working with him. And that's something I used to be an HR manager and I'm just used to doing all kinds of immigration for work and, and so forth. So um, 
So again, you know, I, I help you guys as much as I can. If you have any needs for uh, letters of, of recommendation or anything, you know, job related, you know, I can vouch for you as a colleague or manager, however way we need to do it. So you can be the best you can be by doing the work that you need to do to live, work, be happy, and to continue on creating your artwork. So he's got his immigration status. I'm really happy for him. And he also, um, he's been the sponsor for a couple of our shows before, um, the Save Our Ocean, Save Our Seas, The Endangered, art you know and he's actually donated money as prize money for the artist too so i was so happy that he was able to do the portrait of kamala harris for this exhibition itself so um even though jibin isn't here i want to thank him publicly for his participation and i want to now just read what he has here portrait of kamala harris who is the 49th and current vice president of the United States of America. She is an American politician and attorney. She is the first female vice president and the highest ranking female official in the United States of America's history, as well as the first Asian American and first African American vice president. So that was his statement. And he has done this piece, I believe it's an oil I'm not sure it looks like it's in oil to me it's 11 by 14 and it is on oil it's oil on wooden panel and he did this as I said this year and this is 11 by 14 and you can see the detail of the pearls and the chain her teeth her smile her hair her eyelashes even <laughs> and so forth right yeah. So this, this is the portrait of Kamala Harris. And we were thinking maybe also we can offer her to purchase this or give it as a gift, right? For her vice presidency. So this was wonderful that he included her as his femme champion. And, 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 and you guys, if you wanna make a comment, please do so now so he can have the feedback of your um, ideas or your comments about his artwork. It's a great painting of her. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Thank you. Very symbolic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And that smile, you know, she smiles well. <laughs> yeah. She does smile very well. I think her her nickname for her children are Mamala, right? Her nickname yeah. is Mamala. Yeah. <laughs> Mamala. Exactly. I love that. They call her Mamala. <laughs> Mamala. Mamala. Okay, so we're we're gonna move ahead. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Natalie Grabinski is a French American established painter and illustrator based in the U.S. in Chicago, whose work whose works have been exhibited internationally, having formerly been trained to be a lawyer, she discovered her passion for art upon a move from Paris to Chicago, where studying graphic art soon led to a creative revelation and a new path forward. Nathalie kept working both on her public art and her, I'm sorry, on her art and her graphic design until 2016. In 2017, she decided to cons consecrate all her time to find art. Since then, she has been creating full-time. She lives in Chicago with her cat, Zoe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> statement, her statement is, the sky is not always blue, the grass not always green, the clouds not always white, the earth not always beautiful. Through my art, I am trying to convey a colorfully rich and warm atmosphere one that explodes with vivid colors and is balanced with a harmony of curves and shapes. I aim to create a melody. While I don't seek out to set themes, my work, mostly abstract, does naturally contain repeated symbols or ideas such as generosity, love, humor, fantasy, sound, and spirit. 
My paintings showcase powerful emotions, vibrant colors, and thoughtful expressions of human complexity. And that's the image of Natalie Grabinski, and she is, as we know now, in Chicago, in the United States. So these are her works. I'm just going to show you here. Blast of Dreams, Glory of the Bird, Bonfire in the Azure, and Happy Samba. Mm -hmm. All right, so her's very, she's true to her word in her statement, beautifully done, colors, and she has a, she has a varied aesthetic where she's got linear, curvilinear, and then she's got gestural, more abstract, expressionist mm -hmm. style, and also here the, the drip. So she has, she has a, a, a wide variety of aesthetic here. But her colors, as you can see, they are all connected. She's got the same colors in all of the paintings. So, but that's so yummy. Okay. And I'll just read the first here. He has art exhibitions across the world, including 2021 Global Art Festival exhibit by Elizabeth Jones Art Center, Portland, Oregon, USA, 2020 Women Can Save the World, International Exhibition by AIAPI at Trento, Italy, 2020 Art Revolution Taipei, 2020 International Exhibit Ta Taipei, Taiwan. And it goes on. This I wanna, I wanna uh, read the statement. I am a Nigerian born American trained artist currently residing in the United Kingdom as an artist and a creative and unique personal style. Most of my recent paintings were influenced by the political and social upheaval of our world today and the works of Renaissance artists. The theme of my work is the facts of life, roses and thorns. Life is roses and thorns. Sometimes it emanates the sweet aroma of pleasantness and sometimes it pricks and causes pain. I often use roses and thorns for portrait paintings of the facts of life of people. Roses depict positive parts of life and thorns are painful challenges and negative parts of life. Since then, I have adopted this floral iconography style. And these are his works. Just beautiful. He's got four, the violinist, Leda Meret of Norway, and Simone Biles, the golden rose. Mm -hmm. And the first one here is a virtuous woman, my mother. So this is his mother on the table. Here, that picture, I'll make it a little larger so you can see it. But you can see, you know, these are just incredibly done paintings. This enlarge an oil, can you imagine? 48 by 36 oil on canvas. And that's his mother there on the table here in that portrait. And he said in his talk the last time that he wanted the world to see African citizens, not as just poor and needy, but there is the other side of life for them too, which is beautiful. Yes, it's prickly, but they have, they have their own wealth and their own means as well. They're, all Blacks are not poor and depraved in life. So these, these is, he's showing how his mother's so well-dressed this is his home inside he grew up in and he was out. You could see this building on the other side of it. So this is a different side of Africa that he wants the world to see as well. So if you want to hear his full talk about his artwork, when you go to the, the main page, you can hear his, his talk. Okay, so I just want to let you see these and you can on your own, you can click on these and see the all of his works. Okay, and now let's see who is next.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, laddie. Okay, let's go back here. Oops, sorry. What happened? Okay, right. So when you go back, you can hear the, the talks. If you click on part two or part three, you'll hear Oyemi's talk on his artwork. Then we have Oyelade. Oye will, he has one piece in the show and this was done with charcoal. And he is an artist, a young artist from Nigeria. Okay, and his statement is, I am inspired by everyday events, human life circumstances, and so on. I work with diverse media to give expression to ideas. I gather on a daily basis with the intent to bring about positive changes in society. My art entry is entitled, Yet We Still Smile. The world salutes all women for being unique, temperate, and for their ability to derive joy and hope in a seemingly hopeless situation. Women are the real champion. So that's his statement about this piece. And I just want, so you can see it larger. Again, this is his charcoal. He has a real sense of, of using an, a very good technical skill with this portrait. And he gets, and he, look at her eyes. And you can almost feel the circular motions that he did here with the charcoal and here on the nose and here. You could tell his hand. Each nice teeth. teeth. Yeah, very good rendition of the teeth. Even the gums and the light that was reflecting on the gums, you see that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the clothing and even the trap, the, the strap, the shadow right under her strap, even the shadow. So he's really paying attention to what he's looking at, right? That's one of the therapies of art for artists is that when you're creating something, you really are focusing on what's in front of you. And that in itself is a, is a therapy on itself. You're not thinking about the past or the future. You're right here in the moment and that's where your power is in the present. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and that's Oyelade. Oyewole Tayo. I think I pronounced that right. <laughs> <laughs> I love languages. Yeah. All right. So Stephen Perron. And I know Stephen well and his wife. They when we have a show in Washington, DC, they always come. They're a lovely couple. And um Stephen is in the US. And his femme champion is Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. So, let, so let me quickly just make his statement here. And, and he is widely, I mean, you can all read this, but he, he, has, a, he has an AFA, um, he's got an MA, let's see here. So he's well-educated and so forth. Um, I know he have, he's having some health issues at the present time, but this is what he wanted to offer to our exhibit. And this is Ella, Ella Fitzgerald, is known as the first lady of song for her beauty and tone and perfect pitch. She was considered the most popular female jazz singer in the US for over 50 years. So this is his rendition. He says, I stress the importance of human emotion in my work the portrait of the human figure serve as the images and forms by which I express my reflections on life 
there is a rawness to my work that I hope contributes to the nature of each personality on display. I want a little unattractiveness in the physical sense, and I want body language to be an important consideration in trying to understand each subject. Life is both pleasant and difficult, and I'm attempting to demonstrate both possibilities with the sensitivity and compassion we all deserve as human beings. So that's Stephen's statement about his participation in the show and for Ella. I'm just gonna blow it out so you can see it. It looks, it definitely looks like oil and he also looks like he used a palette knife as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see here what he's got. Oh, it's acrylic, acrylic on wood, 24 by 24. And he did this in 2004. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure he did, he did use a palette knife here. You can tell here. But he used acrylic, which is fine. It's beautiful. And he did this on wood panel, on found wood at that. Mm -hmm. So he's being very environmentally conscious. So you, you can see her eyes, her mouth, her nose, her hair. So that's his rendition of Ella and her spirit. Tarver Harris, who's also a USA artist. She lives in Virginia, I know. I know her well, lovely artist. These are her works and these are small and I beg to please be in the show because what you're doing here is about women and, and she has beautiful statements about each piece. So let me just go up quickly. It's Tarver is an artist working in abstraction to her painting is an exploration into the unknown to discover something new, oftentimes an emotional journey. And I'll let you guys read this on your own, but here towards the bottom, Tarver graduated from Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU, with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Communication Arts and Design. She is an award-winning graphic designer who worked in the advertising and magazine publication creating an extensive print portfolio. Currently living in Stafford, Virginia with her husband and dog along Akokee Creek. I visited her home, lovely, gorgeous home, and she really is really dedicated to her art. All right, so these are her works. Yeah. It's, the top one is called Perfection. Mm -hmm. And her statement here, I call them blurbs, is effortly remembering our own divine perfection. And then the second one is culmination. We are a culmination of the cultural influences of our mothers, fathers, and ancestors who came before us. And the third foundation, we are our own foundation of growth here on earth now. Go explore. And you can see all of the figures in her paintings are female. And the last one, confidence. Confidence is expressed by the amount of self-love we show to ourselves. So I believe what Tarber is trying to message in these pieces and in her titles and her statements for each piece is for women to hear her message to women that perfection, we have our own divine perfection. And each of her statements here, I believe, is directed to women to remind them to have confidence, to remind them of the foundation of growth, and so on. Again, that's my interpretation of her pieces for what, what she's trying to say with all of this. Again, we can go back and read her statement, but again, Let's keep going. So what I'll do next is I'll just show the pages and you can see the art, okay? And then we'll, we'll close it out and then we'll have our remarks. So the next one is gonna be Tenzin. And again, she's a Nepalese artist.
and these are her works. She's got, I believe, three or four. Yeah, she's got four. And these are her works. And her media is, is quite, um, she uses it in a very unique way. Here, this one is called Rawshaw. The one above is Fracked Spirit, Effaced Tekisme, and then Les Femme Intuition Fire. These two in the center are similar to each other. Very, very, very abstract portraiture, right? Yes. Here. Yeah. Beautifully done, those two. Those are my favorite. And then Rawshaw. We know what Rawshaw tests are. You, What you see is what's inside of you and you reflect out, right? And then last one here, fire. She, she has the feeling of fire here in the piece. Okay, I want, and these are Sheffley's. And, and Sheffley did speak um, in the first round of um, artist talks. We had like a, a, a dry run of it. So you can go in um, that page I showed you before and you can hear her speak about her works. I remember her speaking about these women these artists here okay but just quickly her she graduated in interior designing with natural instinct and forte in oil-based paintings as a medium on canvas Sheffley has a fascination for textured and layered artwork conveying subtly a powerful and meaningful messages touching the souls of human beings her iconic work ranges from shades of feminism to mythology so these are her pieces. And as I mentioned, she did speak before, so um, we can continue on from Sheffley. And I believe that Wendy was the next one. And she had one piece, I believe, yes. Yes, this is Wendy. That's a picture of Wendy and she's a US-based artist. And this is her bio, which she made sort of like a, a, um, a poem, art, an expression of oneself, keep dreaming. Art is my true expression. I put love into all things. I take time to appreciate the simple things. I like recycling to help the earth, to capture a moment, to show care to one another, to give gratitude for all I can, including you by Wendy Allen, multimedia artist. And her statement is, I was taught Chinese brush paint paint. I usually use ink in all of my paintings. This painting is a combination in watercolor and black ink. I like this theme as it relates to many of us women who struggle in a world full of discriminations. I wanted to portray women taking back their power in an unfair world. We are strong and must take a stand for the weaker of us and the things that make a difference. So I'm going to click on her large piece because she's got a lot of messages in this one piece, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. And the one the words that she has at the bottom is equal rights, right? Yeah. So you, so she's got just a, a barrage of, of, of feeling here and different facial expressions, different hairstyles, different eye colors, different lipsticks, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Different flowers, different hairdress, different hairdos, different flowers and plants. Right. Even girl she, power. Yeah, girl power. Exactly. <laughs> so she put a lot in here, a lot. And it's just we're very well depicted for what she's trying to say. So we're going to end off with Wendy's. 
And I want to open up now. I'm not going to stop sharing my screen in case somebody wanted me to go back to to any of the artworks. But if you don't, then I'll then we'll stop sharing the screen and we'll see each other. Um, did anybody have any piece that they wanted to go over? Or do you also want to just talk about in general? Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, uh, I have a question. Yes, hi Henry. Where, how you doing? Good. Where can we see all of these as a collection? As, as you usually oh, have. Sure, sure. Let me let me share the screen again. Um, I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't kill something here. I'm trying to find the share screen mode again. Oh, here we go. Let me share the screen. Okay, great. All right, so, I'm sorry. Um, I wanna go back to our FEM page on the internet, right? Where you can see all, all of the collections. If you click here where it says collect the art, you wait click, minute, wait minute. okay, wait minute, I'll go back. So you're, you're on our website, artimpactinternational.org, and you see where it says forward slash fem. If you go to that page, this is the master page of the entire exhibit where you can access the artists, you can register for the upcoming gallery talks, you can purchase the art individually based on the artist's name or read about their bios. Now this one here, to answer your question quickly, this is where the whole collection of all 55 artists reside. So I'm gonna click, see this button? Can you see? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you click on that and uh, it will take you to the exhibit. Let me just pull it down so you can see. You see where it is, now you don't have to to write this down, but I can put, copy it and paste it into the chat so you can, so everybody can see, right? That's where you can access all of this I'm gonna show you now. These are all the artworks. And there, there are, I believe, 137 pieces. So when you go to this page, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I had it, I had it um, large, so I'm gonna make it smaller for myself. So you can see them all. These are all the pieces, right? There are many paintings in this show, so it takes a while to load. Yeah. You see? So this is all of it. All of it. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many artists and so many artworks in the show, we've, we've separated the artist talk into little more bite-sized pieces. We've been on the call now for two hours and that's as a smaller bite-sized pieces we can manage, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. for today. The next one is gonna be the second gallery and that's the largest gallery talk that we're going to have because that has a lot more artworks. But in the meantime, as you ask well, so thank you for asking, these are where you can find all the pieces. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing again, just so I like to see everyone. Um, all right. What do you guys think? What do you know, let's wrap it up. What do you think? You have any comments or questions? You know, you can unmute yourselves and and chime in. We did it nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. That's uh, really beautiful. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I think what I'm going to do is is um, delete the sound behind the 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 galleries, so that way we can, you know, we can, I think this was fine too. But I'm so used to to viewing the artwork in the digital gallery. But this was okay. What do you think? Yeah. What's wrong with it? It's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> great. All yeah. right. Yes, hi, Judith. Hi, um, John and I were just noticing that when um, you look, when you put the artwork up close during your presentation, and, and by the way, I have, I have meticulously shown you the difference between split screen and full screen so that we can then talk about it offline and change it, but it's remarkable. But even when you, when you put it on full screen, it's quite distracting to see the moving logo floating behind it. The moving logo, logo of Art International or Impact in, International. Okay. Yeah. All right, Judith, if we, we can talk behind the scenes on that. Okay, not a problem. I, I love feedback. I love you know, okay. let's, you know, let's improve. I, every exhibit we do, I want to improve, improve, improve. There's always room for improvement. And, and I so love that you want to help us improve and I want to hear okay. it. All right. Okay. So we, we can do it offline though. Okay. All right. No Thank problem. You. All right. Anybody else wants to say about the, the artwork that they saw today or anything any feedback that they want to give to the artists who were featured in this gallery talk? Uh, just thank you, Caroline. Good job. Thank you, Jonas. Thank Very you. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as, as always, I found the exhibit <laughs> fascinating. Ah, thank you, Henry. I really appreciate you putting this here for us. And thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I would like to say something. Don't sure. Wanna, the boat, but I found the <clears throat> background that you had for, for the pictures with the uh, linen flowing back and forth. Mm -hmm. I found it very, <laughs> it added interest. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I've seen that. Mm -hmm. And it really made me focus on what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I know everybody is not going to agree with me, but it's the first time I've ever seen that. And I noticed with all that movement there, I was forced to focus mm -hmm. on what you were talking about. Not on the movement, right. on the focus. Okay. And that held my attention because I refused to look, look away at what was going on. <laughs> I looked at the picture. Well, thank you for that feedback. Hey, thank you for the a, feedback. Yeah. That yeah. was good. I like that too. Good, good. Yeah. I, 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 did, I, did, I did chose that background purposefully not just for the focus but just to represent femininity and that as Anand had said that women are graceful men are too women are graceful and being that we're talking about women so I'm thinking I didn't want to represent physically any particular face or clothing or food but I did want to represent the spirit that I feel is feminine. And for me, it's this, this flowing, flowing and, and beautiful cloth, right? So thank you for even mentioning that, Henry. I'm glad that that, it, that, that was pulled off well. <laughs> thank you. You know, that's a nice, that's a nice segue. Uh, that's a nice segue into what I've been thinking, which is it seems that you know, as that's flowing, that it seems that all of the artists that, you know, talked to us today and we saw their work are very um, inspired by their, their own spirituality. Sure. Which isn't ne necessarily okay, I believe, in Jesus Christ. It's more like there's something there marvelous in the universe that is affecting me, whether it's nature or, or yes, messages from beyond. And I think that came through in every single person's uh, work today. It was interesting. I kept noticing that. Great. 
Well, thank you for sharing that, what you noticed, because again, the artists are always willing and, and um, wanting to hear feedback about what they've done. Because, you know, we, we the, the work hard to show the art, right? And, and as you guys may not know, but Judith is one of our artists who did speak at the initial um, gallery talk. Um, and I, I love Judith and we are, we are happy to have her um, art in the show. So any other, any other comments or feedback for what we've done today, guys? Did you use the pink satin fabric? Pardon? Did you use pink satin fabric? Flowing? I, no, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't create it, but oh. I, I, um, I, I have like this resource of video and uh -huh. images and everything. Yeah. So after, so, so in a way, I curated the background oh, to okay. match our exhibit. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. when, yeah. when I when I choose the music for your for your videos, uh -huh. I, I, I read your statement, I look at the art, and I try to match the feeling of the art with the with the rhythm and this so i go through so much but that's what i love spending my time yeah that's you what know doing. Like. so yeah. yeah so that cloth i'm like that's like a, a beautiful yeah. it probably is silk right because yeah. because cotton yeah. won't move like no, that not like that not like that exactly. yeah you had to have something soft yeah yeah carolyn <laughs> has this show gone worldwide now i mean are we public yet yeah, we, we're definitely public. We were public on October 1st. Okay, I, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm a, a technical boo, but I would like to know from you and maybe other people too is, what do you think is the one important link to send to all our friends and relatives and our collector friends? It would be the artimpactinternational.org forward slash them, F-E-M-M-E, -E, because that will give all the information that anyone wanting to know anything about this show, that, okay. is, that is like the master hub of everything. That's the master hub of everything. So, um, and how does anybody know if, and do you know if it's happened, is how many, how does anybody know if somebody is interested in actually buying one of their pieces. Do you find out? Yes. Or yes. You know? no. in, in, the, in the gallery show, right, in the, how should I put this here? Let me, let me share the screen. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking. I'm going to go to the actual show. Oops, which just, I deleted it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to click on it here. And then, of course, the obvious question is, any sales? <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't gotten any, any emails yet, but I will get email once the sales are done. Like, you know, any, anything that anybody wants to purchase or talk about, it comes to my email address. Ah, but, okay. but what I'm going to do is enter the exhibit from here. Just so you can see, let's see. I'm gonna take um, let's let's say let's say Patricia's piece. Right? Yeah. Here where it says I for info, it says acrylic for sale, and it's got all the information about it, right? And then we click here. I'm gonna delete that so that it'll stop talking. But here, here's where um, they can add to cart, but also I, I, I jumped out of it, unfortunately. Let me go back in. Uh, so you can just like you're on Amazon, you can go to add to cart and then pay right, right. Away. Exactly. Exactly. And and we know then th there's only one of each piece. So if one sells, they can't buy the second. Right. So this is this is the hub of our exhibit. Right? They can register here, they can look at each of the art artists' work. 
and this button is you I just said they can collect but these are the these are the different galleries we have gallery one gallery two gallery three right and and each one of them have their own list so so also Henry they can also click on these bullets just for instance the one that we did today which is number one if they clicked on that then this catalog is just the artist that we went through today that was another way of me <laughs> seeing who's in you know who's going to be speaking today so again that that's accessed here Pretty and, and slick, Carolyn. Yeah, I, I try to think of everything here. Okay, so um, so I'm trying to find. Okay, I'm gonna go back in because there is a space where it says you you know you want to inquire. I believe there's an inquiry, but I can also add a link at the bottom of this hub page. You know, like at the very bottom, I can say. You know, if you yeah. want, you know, contact information, I can put my email here. But in the other exhibit halls that we were using, it had it for each piece where you can you can share or you can ask a question to the curator or whatever. But what I'll do is I'll add that to the bottom. Some of them I do, and this one doesn't have it on here for some reason. But but if somebody wants to, can you lower that? Excuse me. You know what I like about this, if I send one of my uh, art collector friends to this site, they can go through all three exhibitions. Right. If, they right. want to, if they want to choose five paintings, they can keep adding to the cart and that's exactly. the end. Yeah, I like that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, and, 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 and anybody can go to their specific page that, you know, that I showed and when they click, say, say, say um, Jonas's page, and you clicked on his painting on his page, it comes to this page. So there are two ways people can access to purchase on the page on the on our website, and also in the uh, on the um, gallery page when they're clicking on his painting, it'll say if you want to purchase the work. So there are two ways people can purchase. So. So that's that, right? And again, yes, add to cart. Okay. So do I have any other questions about the, I guess the administrative part of the show or the, you know, the back end part? Um, I All have right. one more question, which is this thing that we're doing today, is this, this is just for us, Carolyn? No, no, this is this is being recorded and it will be put online. Like for instance, here. Okay. Okay. The one, the one that we did initially last month. That was that's private. here. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. That that's that wasn't private. That was the it's here. Everything that we do that's recorded, I record it so that you can share it. So there's part one, part two, and part three. Why I did it this way? This was a three and a half hour gallery talk. <laughs> yeah. There's no way anybody's going to want to listen to three and a half hours. So I broke it up. Part one is where everybody's talking to each other. We're getting to know each other. Part two is the actual piece. And part three, I can't remember. But they're, they're, they're all broken up so that it's not too much to have to listen to. I mean, people can start listening to it and then pause it and come back to it later, but they may not, right? So- Okay, all right. So you and I have been talking for two minutes about this particular subject. When, right. the, when the final thing is taped, do you cut out that? I, I can't cut it out, but, but to do those, those edits, it takes a, a hell of a lot of time. So okay. in general, in general, it depends. It depends. It depends on who's on the call today. A lot of the artists want to know more of the back end of what, how, how is this done, right? And it is helpful to them. Some of it is unnecessary, right? For instance, when we, we lost power and we came back, I could cut that out. I do the editing as well, but there's so much to do, especially with, 
we're going over now the two hours. So again, okay. any questions that you have about the technical aspects of this, let's hold off for those on a one-to-one -one conversation online, on, on the phone. Perfect. But thank you. Okay, great. Any, any other questions or comments about our exhibit? Or how you can access stuff? But, and all of the links, again, all of the links that are on this page, you can copy and paste them and share them online. You can share them through email. You can share them on Instagram and YouTube and, you know, all of your social media sites. It's just a link. And when you copy and paste the link, you can have a message. Hey, check out my artwork. You could, you could make a link to just the, the person's page. You could make a link just to their, their you know, here. It's a long link. But if you want them to buy your art, right, you just click and copy, right, and paste it into whoever you're talking to and say, hey, buy this piece if you want to, you know what I mean? So, and the show is going to be up through the end of the year. If I can help it, we can make it go longer, but, you know, let's have some, some beginning and end to it. But all of these links are here for you to use so you can, you can do your marketing. As you can see, guys, you can see if you go on, on um, Instagram, you'll see at least twice a day I've got, I've got um, posts for this show, right? So it's, it's going on and going on. This um, uh, Carolyn, can you go in? I, I can't remember. Maybe somebody else can. When you go in... Uh, as an example, let's say you wanted to say to someone, I'd like you to watch uh, Exhibition 1. Is there a link for just Exhibition 1? You mean Gallery 1? Yeah. Separately. Separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's here. Okay. It's here on this page. Right. This right here is Art List Number 1. So all of the art that's in the gallery one that we did today, if they go here, they'll see the art list. They'll see the, the, this is the gallery in here. Let me X out of this so you can see it better. All this work is what we covered today. When, when I finish editing the video for this recorded section, it's gonna be added over here too. Gallery talk number two, because this is number two, but it's going to be under here, right? So anything that has to do, I, I try to organize it so people can easily access what they want, because it's a big show. So it's like, I know for me, I'll get overwhelmed, right? So we want to make it so that it's easy for them to, to get the information, just like up here. The gallery talk number one was the most general. It covered all of these. It covered all of these. And for the artists that showed up, they were able to talk about their work. That's why some of them aren't here today because they've already talked about it and they can be accessed up here. So, but because- Yeah, that wasn't, Carolyn, that wasn't quite my question. My question is, is there a way that, say I wanted to send it to my sister and she was, she's really busy. She doesn't have time to look at anything except that particular exhibition. Is there, is there a way that- When you, when you, say, when you say, say that particular exhibition, you mean Femme Champions exhibition? Or do you mean this-, just, this? Let's say just, I wanna to say to my sister, click this link and it will go directly to my exhibition. Is that possible? Meaning, is there a slash exhibition three link? So now, that do, you, do you want do you want her to go to your exhibition because you want her to sh to show your art specifically your art? I want well, no. I want them to see see the entire exhibition three. Let's say. Well, it's here. It's here. Exhibition three is number three. Number three here to just click yeah. here. So okay, I think you answered my question. 
in yeah. order to see it, you have to go into the entire thing and then you scroll down and you press ex exhibition three. Yeah, that's your work. That's your work. So I'm answering your question. If you want, if so, when you click on this where it says how to get to it, full screen, it's full screen, full screen or here, either one. I think it's the great pain. Okay. You click on full screen. This is taking you to this particular this particular screen, right? So this is all of three, right? So you copy this link because this link now is says where the where the gallery where the virtual gallery exhibition is being hosted is being hosted by Kunst Matrix. Kunst, Kunst Matrix has now that's the work of the curator to to set it up just like as if it were a physical room right to put the artwork in put all the information about each piece for this specific gallery room so to answer your question it's here it's here it says you and you see it at the top fem champions international and stop number three yes right so that's what you would copy and paste and what i did was i sent this to each of the artists way before so you had all of these separated out but just to answer your question quickly you can just, you know, wherever the gallery that you're looking at, you can always copy and paste the- That's perfect. Thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody around Bye. the world. See you Bye. next time. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.